Welcome back to the Online South Coast YouTube channel. So we've just seen the first day of racing at Sail GP and it's lived up to the hype. There is perfect breeze with great racing and an awesome menu. This video is just going to give you a quick recap on what went down and give you my points of view on what went well and perhaps what could be done better both in the racing and in the coverage. So let's start with the results. It was a perfect day for previous Sail GP champion Tom Slingsby. He came away with a full complement of 30 points. So you get 10 points for each race win. And this has given Australia a pretty good lead at this stage of the regatta. But the big surprise of the day was Team France and their helm NACRA 17 four-time world champion Billy Bisson. I believe France finished the last Sail GP event dead last. So to be second at this stage in a more competitive fleet is certainly an achievement for them. And it will be interesting to see if they can continue this tomorrow. In third, we have Japan, and their helm, Nathan Alteridge, is used to fighting it out with Tom Slingsby at the top of the Sail GP fleet. So he's a little bit off the pace today, but it's certainly all to play for tomorrow. In fourth, we have Jimmy Spittle and Team USA. I think he'll be pretty happy with this result, considering he hasn't had that much time in the boat. But the biggest story of the day was that America's Cup helms, Ben Ainsley and Pete Burling were right at the back of the fleet. Now it would be interesting to see if this changes tomorrow. Certainly New Zealand have an excuse in that they've had very little racing. The racing shown on Saturday was actually filmed on Friday and that was meant to be the training day for the event. So Pete Burling was really thrown in the deep end and no matter how good a sailor you are, there's simply no way you're going to be performing in a fleet of this calibre. Now, I mentioned that the racing was filmed on Friday, even though it was shown on Saturday. So for those of you who were watching on Saturday, you might be surprised that it wasn't live. It certainly wasn't easy to tell. And perhaps this is how sailing events need to be broadcast in future. Sailing coverage has always struggled to overcome the problem of either too much wind or too little wind. It's just the nature of our sport. And I think if we're going to appeal to a broader fan base, which I think it's important sailing does, at least with this LGP event, I think that running the racing on a day with better wind and showing it not live is probably a smart move. But it will be interesting to see the viewing data on this and I guess that will tell the full story. But I'd be interested in getting your opinions on this. Do you think this is a way forward for future sailing events outside of LGP? Or did you not like the fact that it wasn't live? I know I personally stumbled across the results on Friday. Right, so just quickly before we go on with the video, Right, so just quickly, if you've been enjoying the video so far, if you could just take a second and leave a thumbs up below, it helps the channel reach more people and uh, gets this video out there. So what I'm going to go through now is have a look at today's racing and go over a few of the key events. So here we are with the start of race one. As Alteridge comes in below Ainsley, I love the control that Ben Ainsley has at this start line at the moment, but he's going to have to watch out because Nathan Alteridge on the Japanese boat... So we see here all the teams grouped up together and Spain is on their own which allows them to bear away with speed off the line and get to the first mark first. It's really pinning him up towards this end of the line. Seven seconds to go. Who's timed it well? The Spanish up at the top of the line but the boat's turned down towards the line and from nowhere Tom Slingsby's found a gap in the middle of the line. So just quickly pausing it here. You'll notice the commentators are using kilometres per hour as the speed measurement and this proved to be the most controversial topic of the day in the YouTube live chat. So basically a lot of viewers didn't like the fact that they weren't using knots as the speed measurement. I can see both sides to this. Yes, sailing is supposed to be done in knots. However, Sail GP is sailing's attempt to reach a broader audience outside of sailing. So it's quite easy for a sailor to know what kilometres per hour is, how fast that is. But it's not so easy for someone outside of sailing to know what a knot is. Although it might sound trivial, I think it's an interesting debate to have. So I'd be interested in getting your thoughts. So here we see that although Spain got the biggest jump off the start line, it was Australia who rounded first. So that's probably why a lot of the teams were positioning quite far down the line, which made it quite crowded. Because they saw the importance of being the inside boat here. But it's still a good start for Spain. And I'd be happy with their position here. Sailing isn't about being the first round of the mark. It's about minimising the risks that could leave you back here. Two, 
So we see here a rare mistake from Tom Slingsby. You see they plunge it in a bit on the jive and they go out beyond the boundary and they get an early penalty. I don't know what's up with all these guys, but they don't seem to have a very good idea of where the boundary is. Maybe Spain was following Australia and expected that they wouldn't uh, go beyond the boundary. I don't know. So I don't know what happened with Ainsley, but it seemed like he went out the wrong side on this leg. And he dropped down from a fairly respectable position around the first mark to almost last here. You also see here France leading and this was the start of a great day for them. So you see that New Zealand has gone out this side and made quite a big gain. So perhaps it's not so much about the wind strength. You know, I was talking about GBR going out that side and making a loss. But perhaps it was about the shifts. I think I believe the shifts were fairly important today. And so if you see GBR here and New Zealand are here, they could well have been in a different phase. So here we see an example of France's biggest problem on the first day, their manoeuvres. To be fair to France, it wasn't just France, it seemed like a lot of the teams were struggling with their manoeuvres and stuffing the bows into the water. So and it's so important with these boats to keep the boats on the foils. They're flying around at high speeds, but as soon as the holes are in the water, they're going relatively much slower. So if you're watching this and wonder why your team has dropped back so much, it's probably because they've had a bad manoeuvre and stuffed the holes into the water. So you see Australia had that boundary penalty. It's still showing up here, so I'm not sure uh, whether they've cleared it and it's just showing up incorrectly. But it's clear to see Australia are climbing up through the fleet. And I've just paused it randomly here, but you can see they're faster than all these boats. And that was a consistent picture throughout the day. You were noticing that they're always a few knots faster. And over the distance of a race, that makes a big difference. So here the boats are approaching the final section of the beat and Australia are in a good position because they're ducking across these boats um, and they're going to be coming back across on starboard with rights of a mark. So as I said, Australia have come over to the right side at the right point in the beat so they're coming across on starboard so some or all of these boats are going to have to duck the Australians. So I don't know what's happened with Denmark over here, but it looks like some sort of gear failure. And I believe it was Team Denmark who, uh, with two minutes to go to the start, were all in their coach boat. So potentially there is a link between these two incidents. So if you keep your eye on the British boat here, you'll see they're having some problems with manoeuvring. You shouldn't be seeing all this white water. That's a sign of a bad manoeuvre because the holes are in the water. When the foils are in the water, they don't create much disturbance. So you don't see that much white water. So after plunging it in here, they try to accelerate out. But then they plunge it in again straight afterwards. So that's a huge plunge there. It's uh, almost submarined. So skipping ahead here to the next windward mark, keep an eye on the Brits because they're just about to receive a penalty after quite a respectable comeback through the fleet. So Ainsley tries to put in a quick tack here to avoid USA, but it's a risky business tacking inside another boat in the mark zone when you're dinghy racing, let alone racing catamarans going 50 knots. 
So it seemed like the sale didn't pop on time. So, so that might be the reason they've healed over so much. They managed to save it though. They slow down the USA and they end up receiving a penalty which sends them right to the back of the fleet. So we didn't see how Australia caught up here. That's a bit of a disadvantage of watching fleet racing. If the camera is pointed in one area, then you're not able to see what's happening in other areas of the race course. But here we see Australia has caught up France. Again, I'm not sure why, but Australia keep this lead until we finish. Charging Australian moves through into the lead. What a time to take the lead at this stage here. We're coming downwind, Slingsby into the lead, and it's going to be tight on the boundary. The British still with a penalty to get rid of. So on to race two here, and let's watch the start. It's Altridge at the windward end, and at the bottom end of the line it's Ben Ainsley, but it's all about timing now. Who so you see here, Slingsby is coming in from behind quite late, and it's a strategy that seems to work for him. He can luff these two boats up, because when you come in under a boat, you have rights over them. So you see here a lot of shouting from Slingsby. You almost wonder whether Slingsby is picking on Ben Ainsley because of his one-way rivalry, which seems to have formed since Ainsley beat Slingsby last time round. Slingsby does seem to be particularly aggressive, which might be an asset in this fleet because you're not going to want to mess with him. So there wasn't a penalty on the British boat, but Australia had the speed and they had the rights over Great Britain and were able to pop out in front. And the problem if you're starting the far end like Britain and Australia did is that if you're not winning that start like Australia did, uh, then you're going to be spat out the back because the other boats such as France and Japan here are going to come across them and give them dirty air. So skipping ahead a bit into race two, I thought this shot of the leaderboard was quite interesting with Jimmy Spittle, Ben Ainsley and Pete Burling trading the fleet. And although Spittle and Burling maybe have an excuse because they haven't had so much practice in these boats, I don't think this was a picture that anyone was expecting, but it does really show the high calibre of this fleet. So yeah, this is what I'm talking about. It's quite annoying that you can't see what happened to cause this. But here we see Spain almost tipping it over. Luckily, they save it. Another huge splashdown here by the Danish team. It seems like if you have a problem rounding a mark, that will often lead to a follow-up mistake a few boat lengths away from the mark. So here we have a race free start. It's 10 seconds to go. Let's see who wins this one because the starts are crucial in GP, um, and they've been crucial all day. Uh, who wins the start has a big chance of being up there in the top three. So here's probably my biggest criticism of the coverage all day. Getting this camera angle right is not hard. You can't see what's happening with this camera shot. I don't, I don't know what they were thinking, but hopefully they'll get better at using the correct cameras at the correct time. So here we see Britain actually get a good start here and uh, Australia also getting a good start 
And spoiler alert, it's these two boats which end up one and two in this race. So Ben Ainsley leaves this race for a while, but here we can see how Australia take the lead back from them. So although Britain had quite a big lead here, having to do the extra drive where Australia likely doesn't, uh, that slows the Brits down and forces the split at the mark, which allows Australia to split out this side, Brits to go out this side, uh, and so the Brits can't cover. And for those non-sailors out there, if you're ahead, you want to be covering your competition, getting between them and the mark so that they can't get past you and you're passing on your disturb win onto their sail. So you see here, Slingsby running at 10 kilometers per hour faster than Ainsley. So you just heard the commentator mention that there seems like more breeze on the right side of the course and that did seem to be a pattern that played out throughout the day. So you see there, quite a significant game for Australia. And what we've seen today is once you let Australia in the lead, they're not going to let you get back into it. So at the end of the day, Tom Slingsby and Australia get the 10 points for finishing first. And Ainsley gets the 9 points. Uh, a much more respectable result from him. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether he can keep that up tomorrow. But after day one, it's looking like Australia are very strong. They're making less mistakes than everyone else. They seem to be incrementally faster than everyone else. And it will be interesting to see whether they can keep up that form tomorrow. So before we end the video, my question to you guys is, if Australia is for number one tomorrow, who do you think is going to be number two? I think it's all to play for, but I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts. Also, it'd be great to hear what you thought of the coverage today. I thought overall it was pretty good, with some small areas to improve, especially the camera positioning. So that's it for the video today. If you want to get more of these Sail GP and America's Cup videos like this, press the subscribe button and then the alerts bell. Um, you need to press the alerts bell because that will tell YouTube that you want to get a notification each time I release a new video. So with that said, I'll see you in the next video.